DeepBlue Cover is the autonomous AI-powered coding tool from DeepBlue. It writes Java unit tests automatically, without human interaction and without using any external resource. While running, DeepBlue Cover may throw a number of R013 codes with the generic message no inputs found that don't throw a trivial exception. This is neither an error on the DeepBlue side nor a problem with the code being tested. It is simply an indication that the code cannot be tested without some refactoring work. In this video, we'll show how to take advantage of the log files generated by DeepBlue Cover and how to apply the instructions written there in order to resolve the R013 code, covering thus more areas of the source code with useful unit tests. We will go through several situations when your Java code may result in R013 being thrown by DeepBlue Cover and explore a few workarounds which ultimately make your code more testable and increase unit test coverage. All examples in this movie share this pomxml file which calls for the JUnit and Mokito dependencies such that DeepBlue Cover can write assertions and mock method inputs respectively. The Maven Surefire plugin should also be listed because DeepBlue Cover uses it to validate tests after writing them. We are looking at a class named File Processor. The command lines method declares an input output exception as it tries to use a file reader which takes a file f as argument. At the same time, the file reader is chained to a buffer reader which can read that file line by line. If it starts with a hash key, the line is stored in a list of strings which is eventually returned by the method. Let's try to write unit tests using DeepBlue Cover. We need to use the command dcover create followed by the fully qualified name of the method which we want to test. Let's see what the R013 means here by looking in the log file. DeepBlue Cover tried to work out the functionality of the method which in this case needs to open and read a text file. Therefore, it generated a path and a file name and tried to fetch it but as this was a non-existing file, DeepBlue Cover stopped before being able to assert anything and left a partial test in the log file. Note that this partial test is not added into the typical test Java folder of this project. The log file also suggests possible actions for fixing the R013 code and will opt for using a factory method in order to avoid the file not found exception concluding in this case no inputs found that don't throw a trivial exception means that DeepBlue was not able to write a unit test because as soon as it tried, a find not found exception was thrown. Before implementing a solution to the R013 code in this case, it is worth reaffirming a general principle of programming which is that of keeping each function logic to the minimum possible. Here, the command lines method, apart from reading lines from a file, contains code which processes text lines. We rather prefer to refactor the code into something like this. Now, reading a file is implemented by the readFile method, for which DeepBlue Cover will still throw an R013 code, but the remaining logic of processing text lines was moved to a different method. As we will see, this last method is covered by a unit test written by DeepBlue Cover. We need to make DeepBlue Cover aware that we have a text file ready to be used when unit tests are written. Here we have a file named input text at the project root level. Users have the possibility to interact with DeepBlue Cover and customize how tests are written using the so-called DeepBlue rules. These are instructions written in YML format and saved in a file called DeepBlue rules at the project root level. Back into the file processor class, we can see that the problematic read file method takes a file as argument. Therefore, we can think of a static factory method load file called with a string which will return a file object. Such a method can be saved in a factory class here named file factory. Finally, using the Java bytecode syntax, we add a rule in our collection of DeepBlue rules 
mentioning the file which we want to pass into tests. Let's now run diffblueCover for the file processor class by using the command dcoverCreate followed by the fully qualified name of the class. With this occasion, diffblueCover wrote five tests for the two methods and the R013 code is gone. Moreover, the test written for the read file method uses assertions based on the text file provided. We can check the unit test coverage by running all tests with coverage. Concluding, the file processor class has 100% line coverage. The file factory class, for which we didn't ask unit test, is implicitly covered. What happens if an R013 code with file not found exception is thrown from different methods? Each of them will rely on the same factory class which contains only one method. The solution is to define two different diffblue rules as shown here. The first rule uses the factory method with the file name input txt as parameter and acts on the method read file. The second rule uses the same factory method but with a different file named another input txt as parameter and acts on the method read another file. After running the blue cover again, we can confirm that indeed the two methods are tested with different input files. Let's look at a class which contains a simple enum and a static hash map named type map. The static block initializes the hash map with a few key value pairs. We then have an instance method set type which receives an integer, subtracts one and attempts to retrieve the value stored in type map at that key. Because the keys in type map are discontinued, chances are that calling set type with a random integer will result in a null pointer exception. Let's see how DeepBlueCover will handle this situation by running it for the set type method and let's do it keeping partial tests. DeepBlueCover wrote a partial test in which it used one as argument for set type, but as we know, there is no value stored in type map with key zero. Therefore, the null pointer exception encountered during the act section was flagged as an R013 code. The solution in this case is to add the diff blue rule for a primitive of integer type. We need to list the parameter name as it appears in the set type signature and assign it a value using the immediate keyword. This value must be any of the keys in the type map plus one, so we can go with 1112. We then run the same command as before. In the new test, we can see that our choice of integer was used, and because the set type method returned an enum value, this test is valid and contributes to the overall unit test coverage. We still get an R013 code because DeepBlueCover tries its own values for integers, but with this occasion, R013 would not be listed in the log file summary. In this class, named field processor, we have name, an uninitialized private field of type string. There is also an instance method isABC, which checks if name equals a particular string literal, here ABC. Since this class only comes with the default empty constructor, any instance of field processor will have a null name, and therefore there is no way to test is ABC. We can check how DeepBlueCover deals with this situation by running it for the whole class. Because we chose to keep partial tests, here we have an incomplete and disabled test marked with an R013 code. The reason is a null pointer exception thrown while DeepBlueCover attempted to call the equals method on a null string. 
One solution here is to add a constructor which initializes name. Let's run again. Indeed, the constructor is used and our method is conveniently tested with two complementary assertions. Another solution is to add a setter method. Let's see if DeepLookCover can use it. With this occasion, there are more tests for our method and we can see that the setter method is used. Here we want to test the method isSafe from the class BlackboxSafety. This method takes a reference of type BlackBox defined by the other class. As we can see, the method getSafetyLevel from BlackBox does not have a useful logic and simply returns null. In this case, we can expect that testing is safe will not be straightforward. Let's run the flu cover for this method only, keeping the partial tests. We can see two R013 codes thrown for a null pointer exception. With this occasion, because we declared the Mokito dependency in the POM file, DeepLookCover used it to mock the black box class, and taking advantage of the specific method when their return completely covered the method is safe. However, depending on the complexity of the class which needs to be mocked, this is not always possible. In this case, we have some code which uses a system property here named prop. We assume that prop is a string and write a property length method which is supposed to return the length of that string. Let's run the block cover for this method only, keeping partial tests. We get a partial test marked with an R013 code because property is null. It couldn't be otherwise since we didn't declare it. The solution is to set a value for it directly in the command used to run DeepLookCover. More exactly, we will add, for example, dash capital D prop equals something. Now, prop will be a string which equals the string literal something. We can see now that our method is tested and, as expected, returns the length of the property which in this case is the length of the string something. This was a brief tutorial on how to fix the R013 reason code thrown by DeepBlue Cover. For more details, please visit deepblue.com.